was a sight for my soul. Have you guys ever heard of this movie called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? It's a little indie animated movie. It wasn't made by Disney, it didn't make a billion dollars, so that automatically means that nobody saw it, and y'all slept on it. While I'm gatekeeping, might I recommend you all go see these underappreciated masterpieces? In all seriousness, if you're one of those people that actually calls Spider-Verse underrated, then you don't actually know what underrated means. Look, I like this movie a lot too. In fact, I'm making this video to say what it is I love so much about this movie, and how it's made me a bigger fan of Spider-Man as a character. I'm just saying, I feel we can get a little carried away sometimes when claiming something was quote-unquote slept on. Not every movie is gonna make a billion dollars. And more importantly, not every movie needs to make a billion dollars to prove it's worth seeing. I know I'm kinda contradicting myself from my last video when I say that, but that shows I really wasn't paying attention to what I was saying in the last video. I truly don't believe a movie's box office numbers matter in the grand scheme of things. If that were the case, then Avatar and Avengers Endgame would be everyone's favorite movies, and like, I... Can you name a single character from the movie Avatar? Um... Is that the blue people? Sorry if this is a bit of a tangent, I just really needed to say this. Anyway, as for Spider-Verse, yeah, of course it's great. It's my favorite movie from 2018 and has rapidly become one of my favorite movies of all time. But why? What makes this movie so special? Before I get into that, let me say the negatives I have to say. Yes, it's true, this movie has some things that kind of bother me. Man. Honestly, it's just nitpicky stuff I don't like. The score is great, but I'm not a fan of the songs that play throughout. I'm not scared! I'm not saying it doesn't make sense for these songs to be a part of the score. I mean, this sounds like the music Miles would listen to, so it makes sense that would be part of the soundtrack of the movie. I'm just saying I personally don't like the music, but like, whatever. Besides that and some weird exposition spoken at the beginning of the movie, I think that's just about it. Just nitpicky stuff. Okay, you can start on canceling me now. Let me say what I like about this movie. Man. I love Spider-Verse for a multitude of reasons, I can't just pick one. I love the animation, which seems obvious, but mainly because of how unique it is. One thing I can always admire about a movie is how it presents itself, especially if how, how it, it presents, presents itself is unique. unique. A good example of this would be The Dark Crystal. I love The Dark Crystal because no other movie looks like it. I love Spider-Verse because no other movie looks like it. I've heard the argument that if this was just standard 3D animation, then people would not be praising this movie like they are, and I completely agree. I certainly wouldn't think this movie was all that special, but because it makes an effort to have a different look from other animated movies, I can appreciate it more. Can you imagine if this movie looked like any of Sony's other animated movies, like Angry Birds or Emoji Movie? I'm serious, this movie would not work nearly as well as it does with the way it looks now. It looks like a comic book brought to life. Man. I also really like the characters, Miles especially. I'll say it, I like him more than Peter Parker. Oh well, don't at me. I like Miles because he's kind of a dweeb at the beginning, but not so much that you're cringing really hard. He's just funny and awkward enough that you can relate to him, but also there's room for improvement, which is why he goes through an arc and changes as a character for the better. I mean, I like the other characters as well and how they're all flawed in their own way, especially Peter B. Parker. He's an asshole, but you get why he's an asshole, and even though he's the wise mentor character, he goes through his own arc as well and changes by the end for the better. I really like how this movie has so many details, it's insane. Like, how has nobody mentioned the Shaun of the Dead sequel poster in Times Square? I also love how the last movie Sony made before this was Emoji Movie. That's the best redemption arc I've seen in Hollywood in a long time. Man. Does it seem I've gotten off track and I'm just listing stuff I like about this movie? Probably, but that's kind of the reason why I made this video so short. I don't have a lot to say in a movie like this because everything that needs to be said I feel has already been said. I don't like the argument that if a movie or topic has been talked about in one video then no other videos need to be made about it. I'm still gonna make a video about The Last Jedi, you all can't stop me. I still wanted to get out there what it is I love about this movie and how it hasn't even been a year and I've already claimed it as one of my all time favorite movies. And I don't need to make a 20 minute video about that, I could just explain it in a short little video. I love this movie, but I hate when I see people calling it underrated, because it's not underrated if everyone says it is. That's such a paradox. Spider-Verse may be the least successful Spider-Man movie at the box office, but who cares? Like I said, a movie's worth should not be weighed by how much money it makes. Maybe that's how Hollywood sees it, but that place is run by pedophiles, who gives a fuck what they think. My point is, this movie really amazed me, and it made me more excited for more Spider-Man stuff. I don't know what Spider-Man will be in next because, well, neither do Sony or Disney, but I know that I'm a lot more excited now. And with that, Spider-Verse is my favorite movie from 2018 and my favorite movie from Sony Animation. I mean, besides the open season series, no other movies are as epic as them.